Federation, Mele Carey, in a tweet. He said that the outgoing OPEC Secretary General died at about 11 p.m. on Tuesday, 5th of July, 2022, describing the death as a great loss to his immediate family, the NNPC, Nigeria, the OPEC, and the global energy economy. Late Burkindo, earlier on Tuesday, had been honored by President Muhammad Buhari at the State House in Abuja for his work at OPEC, whose tenure as the Secretary General was scheduled to expire this July. The President described him as a worthy ambassador of the country. OPEC in the first six years and your efforts have placed the organization in a stronger position to confront the challenges it will face in the coming years. The government and people of Nigeria are indeed proud of you and your achievements. I have directed the Ministry of Petroleum Resources and the NNPC to mobilize the Nigerian oil and gas industry to organize a befitting welcome reception in your honor. Bearer arrangements of the late OPEC Secretary General will be announced shortly. Now, staying with security matters, the Ansaru terrorist group that attacked the Kaduna Abuja train in March has threatened to begin slaughtering the victims in their custody. Daily Trust reported last week that one of the victims was critically injured after being shot by one of the abductors, which they claimed was an accidental discharge. Audio in circulation on Tuesday was believed to be a voice of one of the group members threatening to slaughter the victims because the government failed to seek their release. Confirming the authenticity of the video, a Kaduna-based publisher, Tukur Mamu, who has been an intermediary between the group and the government, said that the audio was real and the group had fixed Wednesday to carry out the threat. Now, displaced residents of Mada district of Guso, local government area of Zamfara State, are appealing to the federal government and Zamfara State government to ensure that 10 of their families members, family members who are still in bandit captivity are safely rescued and reunited with them. They made the appeal in an exclusive chat with Trust TV News at Barakallahu area of Qatar Kwashi Emirate where they are currently seeking refuge from bandits who sacked them at their various communities. The report. Few weeks ago, suspected bandits invaded some villages at Mada district of Guso local government area of Zamfara state, setting houses, foodstuff and other properties ablaze. They killed and abducted an unspecified number of residents of the communities while others took to their heels for safety. Barakalal area of Kwater Koshi Emirate is housing several of the displaced persons who were sacked by the suspected bandits. Maryam Yusufu, one of those who ran from Gidanbai to Barakalal area for safety, narrated the gruesome killing of her husband Yusufu and the aftershock that led to the death of his co-wife. Another displaced woman who identified herself as Adiza Bai said the bandits killed her younger brother and her daughter burned their house, foodstuff and clothing and left them with nothing. The bandit slaughtered my husband like a ram. After the incident, my co-wife died because of trauma. We don't have what to eat. They burned our community and everything we have. We don't have clothing to wear, food to eat and no house to live in. They killed our husbands. The bandits abducted 10 persons from our community. Other victims of the bandit attacks said 10 of their family members are still in captivity, adding that the abductors have demanded 15 million naira as ransom. The bandits killed my younger brother and my daughter, burned our houses and cut her away with our valuables. We don't have anything in the community. We don't have food to eat until we go out to beg before we can get food to eat. We want the government and rich people to assist us with food to eat, clothing to wear, and shelter. They destroyed our communities and rustled our cattle. 
We are begging the government to restore security and peace, to enable us to go to our communities, to carry out famine of what we would eat. The village head of Berkalau area of Kwater Kaushi Emirate, Mohamed Usman, appealed to the state and the federal government to intensify efforts in the fight against banditry so that peace can return to the state and live without fear of terror. So, People have been helping the displaced persons here with food and clothing, but anyone who left his or her place elsewhere would not have rest of mind because he or she wants peace to be restored so that he or she can return home. We thank the federal and Zamfara state government for what they have been doing. However, we want them to do more to tackle the insecurity situation to restore peace so that the displaced persons can go back to their homes to carry out farming. The displaced persons' major concerns and prayer are to witness the speedy restoration of peace at various communities and in Zamfara State in general so that they can return to carry out farming activities. A 23-year-old lady, Mercy Jeremiah, has been shot dead around Tudungwada village of Lube, Abuja. Mercy, according to our reporter, was shot in the stomach by an armed robber after she raised alarm that she was being attacked by the thieves around 6.30 in the morning while on her way to work. Maradia Umar visited the community and now reports. It was a sad day not just for Mercy's family, but the entire Jidu community, as the news of her death threw almost everyone who have come across her into mourning. Messi, before her death, lived with her elder brother in this house, situated in the Jidu community, a few meters to Tudungweda, Lube. Due to the bad nature of the roads, residents in this community had to walk few meters to a junction that borders Jidu and Tudungweda, where Mercy met her assailants. Izzy Collins is a commercial motorcyclist. He tried to save Mercy's life after he heard her cry. I can't see the people gather, see one girl for ground, lie down. Then they asked me to help, to help, to help, help, help. I dropped my passenger. I carried my passenger and now I discharged the passenger. Carry this girl to Yabison Hospital. As we went there, they reject them and say they know if you do what you for this matter. From the Yavison to uh, National Hospital. Now this morning I come come out. I know even know some person where they live with me for the same street. Now this morning I come to here and say this girl could, could not make it. When we visited Mercy's apartment, the house was under lock and key, but we met her neighbor was yet to come to terms with the fact that Mercy is gone. Now so I take see that thing. Now only now we just here say the girl don't die. Then shoot her. This to Dunwada road. If we they go to Dunwada like this, she they go walk. Maybe she no see bike. She go she so if we know she bike for Judo, we go trek, go to Dunwada before we see Okada. Before she even reads the Okada, this to Dunwada road. We just hear say the girl don't die, they don't shoot her. She does. Mercy is a gentle lady. She know they fight. She go just greet you, go her own way. She know they fight, she know they quarry. After a little interaction with Mercy's neighbor, we got across to the only relative she has in Abuja, her elder brother, who was at Lugbe police station completing processes leading to the release of his sister's remains for her burial in their hometown, Kogi State. He could not hold back tears as he asked for justice for his only sister. Those people said when they came out, they saw the, the guy who murdered her running across into the bush. They were shouting, but nobody to because it was drizzling a little and the road was somehow scanty. So I then, before I would get to the mortuary to see her lying the code of blood, my star was murdered and. She could not even tell me bye-bye. She could not even tell me brother bye-bye before. And I'm looking onto the government and onto everybody who can come to my rescue and my sister to bring my sister justice. Justice, that's all I'm looking for. 
In a telephone chat, the FCT Police Public Relations Officer Josephine Ade said investigation is ongoing. Martia Umar, Trust TV News Abuja. You're watching the news update on Trust Television coming up after the break. Coping with rising food prices. Details and more shortly. Join us again. Thanks for staying. You're watching the news update on Trust Television. Here's a reminder of our top stories. Nigeria Correctional Service confirms attack on Kujie Prison as bandits attack President Buhari's advance convoy in Katsina. OPEC Secretary General Mohamed Barakindo dies hours after visiting Buhari. In other news, reactions have continued to trail the leadership crisis of the Bochi State House of Assembly following an attack on some members by hoodlums at a meeting venue. Residents who described the crisis as uncalled for are urging on both camps to sheath their swords for the sake of peace. The report. Across the state capital, residents are calling for calm in the interest of democracy saying that the crisis will further divide people along party lines. All this while, these members did not say anything. Whatever the governor sent, they will pass it without questioning. Now their interest is not protected. That is why they are not happy with the leadership and they want to impeach the principal officers of the house. Now we know them. One of the major issues is the 2022 Hajj exercise in the state. Some are not happy. They are stranded at the Hajj camp, and the speaker is the Bauchi deputy Amirul Hajj. Yaume Dala, a Bauchi politician and businessman, and Mohammed Usman said it was unfortunate that issues around pilgrimage contributed to the fracas. The House members are taking too far to satisfy their selfish motive, and they are not doing it for the people who elected them to represent them. But what transpired is that their list of intending pilgrims didn't make it to Hajj. So they are only witch hunting the speaker to impeach him. That's my opinion. They didn't start it until when they are not around. I, I'm not saying I didn't go deep to know what is the cause. But uh, the reality, if what they are pursuing for the impeachment, they are right. Why didn't do it when they are around? Why is it after they are not around? That's the area of our question mark number one. Number two, uh, I don't know. The causes they are mentioning, I think this is a global problem. Why? Because it affects almost all the states. Almost, almost all the states are affected with this issue of uh, pilgrimage uh, of this year. And uh, from our side, the Muslims, we thank God. Meanwhile, efforts to reach members of the House for comments proved abortive, even as security personnel remained stationed at the entrance of the House of Assembly complex. Following the decision by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to extend the continuous voter registration beyond the initial June 30th deadline, electoral officers have continued with the exercise nationwide. 
The decision, which followed concerns about disenfranchisement of many Nigerians who are yet to register, led to the creation of new registration centers to cater for the large influx of registrants. Trust TV's Aisha Salihu visited one of the centers in the FCT and now reports. The Independent National Electoral Commission in the last few weeks has received knocks from Nigerians following the hiccups witnessed by many registrants in some registration centers in the country. This, alongside the like number of people yet to register, informed the deadline extension decision by Mahmoud Yakubu, chairman of the commission. A visit to some newly created centers in the FCT reveals that the situation is not different. There are also complaints about the unprofessional conduct of the commission's staff in some states and the shortage of registration machines, personnel, as well as network challenges. The situation is seriously the registration process is very, very slow. The, 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 the people doing the registration, they will take like 30 minutes to 40 minutes attending to just one person. You understand? And the, the numbers of people attending to, to, to people here, they are, they, are, they are very few. You understand? So the, 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 the registration process is just very, 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 very slow. I'm in Lagos, I'm not in Abuja, so I came all the way from Lagos to Abuja so because of this particular issue. Let me know in Abuja everything is going to be I try to wonder that I've been here since morning, since 7 o'clock in the morning, so I've been on the line without getting any food, no water. So I just want to, because I know that what I'm passing through will be that the same thing everyone is talking to guide me, because I see people surrendering over this place. However, some registrants commend the Commission's commitment to ensure that as many Nigerians as possible get their names on the voters' register ahead of the 2023 general elections. It's a welcome development because what we already had before, there's so many people yet not registered. So many people want to register, they were already family, you know, people were not pressure to get registered. But now with that extension, I think we will give more voters the opportunity to get registered and then be able to make their choice in the next Meanwhile, as a July 1 to 15 window for the upload of the list and personal particulars of nominated candidates by political parties approaches, INEC has urged parties to properly scrutinize documents to avoid any mix up and duplication of names. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now, Nigerians are lamenting the rising cost of living following soaring food prices as inflation hits a four year high. In this report, Ibrahim Ismail from Gombe reports that there is an air of uncertainty among majority of Nigerians as inflation is set for the eighth consecutive monthly increase. The report. This is the residence of Dr. Habib Mohammed, residing in Tabra area along Gombe Bypass. He caters for a family of 10. He said taking care of his family has been very challenging due to inflation. He said prices of basic amenities are highly exorbitant, pushing beyond his affordability limits. This is because of uh, the hike in food prices. Whatever you used to buy a few years ago, like uh, 100 Naira, it is now almost 300. Not just, uh, it is uh, thrice the price you used to buy it. If I may give an example, a uh, few years ago, uh, we used to buy maize, that's corn. The bag is about uh, 7,000, 8,000. This is just uh, five years, five, six years. It's about 7,000, 8,000. But now, the price is uh, 17, 18, 19. There was a time that uh, the price was more than 20,000. When you look at uh, rice as well, the price is now 19, 17, 18, 19, 20,000. This is per bag. Habib asked government and other stakeholders to intervene by regulating prices of commodities in markets. Definitely nobody can do that except the authority. 
because it is a uh, uh, responsibility of the authority to checkmate the inflation. This is because uh, we don't have shortage of these items. We don't have shortage of uh, rice, shortage of maize. When you go to market, you see it in abundance. Better because of the inflation. So the prices are always hiking. This year, people from different parts of the world have been crying over high cost of living, a factor that affects the poor and the rich in developed and developing countries, just like in the United Kingdom and Nigeria from Gombe. Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. And away from Nigeria, the suspected gunman in the deadly shooting at a 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois, has been charged with seven counts of first-degree murder. Late County State's Attorney Eric Reinhardt, who said on Tuesday night that he will ask that the suspect, 21-year-old Robert Bobby Cremo III, be held without bail, added that the county is anticipating dozens of more charges. If convicted, he will face a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole, Reinhardt said. Authorities said that earlier Tuesday they believe the suspected gunman planned the attack several weeks in advance. Police said that he wore women's clothing as a disguise and blended into the crowd after allegedly attacking parade goers from a rooftop with a high-powered rifle, killing seven and wounding dozens more. And that's a wrap on Trust News Update. Watch more via all our social media platforms and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for watching.